All right, hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Lightroom Live. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist, and it's my pleasure to be streaming to you live here today to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that's capturing, not only capturing images um, on a mobile device, but more importantly, capturing them in RAW, and now even capturing them in HDR. For those of you who are new to HDR, HDR is uh, an acronym for High Dynamic Range. Let me make sure I've got my chat window open here so I can see all your wonderful comments. And just a second here, okay, good. We've got that one open. And let's get this one open over here while everyone is piling into the room. And hello, hello, hello. Okay, so I see everyone coming in now and I can see your chats now and we can begin. So um, just to give you a quick recap, we you know, probably if you own a smart device, Android, iOS, or tablet or other, you have more than likely used it at least once to capture a photo. <laughs> Uh, and in the past, all of those photos, no matter what platform you were on, were always in JPEG. Well, the Adobe Lightroom team has been working hard to get past that, especially for the serious um, smartphone photographers, professionals, prosumers, people that just take their, their mobile photography a little bit more seriously. And you've got these great sensors now in these mobile devices, and of course, just like the sensors in your DSLRs, you want to take advantage of them as best you possibly can. So the best way to do that is to do it via RAW. Um, so the Lightroom team started rolling out RAW on the devices that support it, both on iOS and Android. And uh, we're very happy now that we have a release in this current release, which is 2.7, at least on iOS. I'm not sure if it's the exact same number on Android, but on both platforms, we now can capture HDR. So um, before we jump over and do it, let me explain very quickly, like in two seconds, maybe four, uh, what HDR means from a capturing standpoint. Now you probably have even seen mobile apps that say they capture in HDR. And um, they may do it, and they do it quickly because they're usually doing it with a JPEG or two. We're capturing three RAW files and combining them together just like you do on your desktop. And when would you ever do this? in those situations where you've got a challenging lighting setup. So for example, um, if you've ever taken a picture next, or photographed something next to a bright window, you know your camera can't usually distinguish between which scene it should try and capture. Inside the room, and, and therefore blow out the window, and everything in the window is completely white, or, capture what's in the window and everything in the room is completely dark. Those are the situations where HDR really comes in handy because what it'll do is capture uh, one image of the window properly exposed, one image of what it thinks the room should be properly exposed, and one image kind of in between and merge them all together in post-processing. And in the past, that, that post-processing would be done by you in Lightroom. We would just, you know, you shoot bracket it with your DSLR, You'd have those three or five or how many of our images, or even you can do it with two, those two images that you captured, and you would combine them together using the HDR features of Viro. Now this can all be done in your smart device. So let me get set up here so I can show you how it all works. I've got an iPhone 7 Plus here, but like trust me, it does work with Android as well. I'm going to switch over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm doing. And uh, on the computer, I'm, of course, running Lightroom on the desktop. And I just wanted to show you an example of exactly what I was talking about. I was sitting uh, in my family room the other day, and I said, you know what? Uh, that outside window looks great, except my camera saw this. Now, this was capturing in RAW, but capturing just the automatic setting, meaning I just had the camera set on auto, Snap the photo, and that's what it saw. So again, it was trying to expose for the room. Said, I don't care about that thing outside the window. Whatever that is, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, now, this is what the HDR looks like. And I didn't do anything special. I didn't combine them manually. This is just the auto HDR setting 
now in Lightroom Mobile. And as you can see, before, and they're slightly off because I was hand holding, like I'm going to be doing today, and after. So HDR versus standard RAW file, or even worse if it were a standard JPEG. So I see some folks asking some questions right off the bat. Um, how long will this be? The stream shouldn't be any more than 15 to 20 minutes. And hello from all the people from around the world. I see Victoria in the chat. I see people from Ghana, Sweden. And uh, yes, it is amazing quality, and I agree with you. Um, and that's it. Good afternoon and hello. And all right, let's go on and keep going. All right. So now I'm going to bring up my phone so that you can see it. And now that I've got my phone up, I'm just going to go ahead and switch to the uh, Lightroom app, which I keep in my Adobe folder with all my other good Adobe apps. And I'll bring up Lightroom. And I think it'll take me to my last collection that I was in. Yep, I'm in a collection, the same collection that's on the desktop called HDR. And we do this nice thing in uh, Lightroom Mobile where we've got now the little labels. So you'll know right off the bat which one's a DNG, meaning a raw image and which one's an HDR, meaning one that was processed from multiple raw images. All right, and at the very bottom in the right-hand corner, matter of fact, let me turn it on so you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna turn on my touches here. All right, so now you'll see a little red dot everywhere I touch, and let me go back to my HDR um, collection. And in the very bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the uh, camera icon. So that means that I can actually bring up the Lightroom camera at any given time. And if here's a, uh, just a bonus tip. If you do it while you're in a collection, then you'll be able to shoot into that collection directly. So you won't have to remember, uh, oh, where are those photos and which collection do I want them on? Just bring the collection up first when you bring up the camera, which I'm now gonna bring it up. And that's the live view here. Um, and that's you guys. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I, I now have the ability to bring up the camera and shoot directly into that collection. All right, so I'm gonna go to auto, and I've got a scene right in front of me, right past the camera, you guys can't see it yet. Uh, it's, it's a window, so there's a window facing me, and off to the side of that window, I've staged some props uh, so that we can see how this looks. So let's go ahead and bring it up, and I'm shooting on auto right now, and this is the typical thing. So either it'll expose for the window, or it'll expose for the uh, stuff, the props. So let me go ahead and, uh, again, this is gonna be handheld, so don't expect it to line up perfectly, but let's go ahead and snap a photo of that. All right, great, it captured it. Now let's switch to HDR and high dynamic range. And I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna change any of the settings, I'm just gonna tap the same thing with everything on auto or the defaults. And okay, now, when I switch back to auto, I just wanna, or automatic, I just wanna point out that you do at the very top have the option to switch from JPEG to DNG or JPEG to RAW, um, depending if your camera supports it. If your camera supports RAW then it, um, for Lightroom, then it will also support HDR. Okay, so now let's get out of the camera. And wait, I only see the DNG. Where is the HDR? Well, if you can see in the upper left-hand corner, little three dots going across the cloud, meaning that it's doing that background processing. It's actually putting those raw files together and it just finished. All right, so here's the DNG. Here's the one that I just captured. And again, just said, okay, take a picture of that corner, do your best, look at the window. <laughs> the window's completely blown out, completely gone. And now let's swipe over, nope, the other way. And now that is the one that is the HDR where I actually have stuff in the window. Now keep in mind, I let everything go in auto. I didn't tap to focus. I didn't do anything extra. It is basically doing what it thinks it needs to do. I can at any given time say, eh, that was okay, but let's go in now to edit and let's process this a little bit more because we are working with a raw file. Or as I can see on the desktop in the background, it's syncing up to Lightroom Mobile and will be on my desktop. So I can process this on my phone right here on the go, or I could process it on uh, my desktop when I get back to work or, or home or wherever my laptop or desktop happen to be. All right, so in the raw file, or the DN, or the, <laughs> the DNG is there, the HDR just popped in. So at any, any place, I can make these adjustments. So let's, since I have the phone still in hand, let's tap on light. And you'll say, well, wait a minute. 
Uh, some of the sliders are already adjusted. Um, did you adjust those? And no, HDR makes some assumptions based on the team experimenting with all kinds of different HDR images they've captured, and they think that these are good default settings. You may or may not agree. It depends on your shot. Uh, so at any given time, you can, of course, I can bump up the contrast of this image. I can say, well, I don't want the shadows to be quite that bright. I can bring down my shadows. Um, and uh, yeah, I do want my blacks a little bit darker than that, and so forth and so on. Yeah, don't definitely take down the highlights all the way in this case because of that. So these are non-destructive adjustments, just like they are on the desktop, making non-destructive adjustments in Lightroom Mobile. And those adjustments also will sync once I'm done. So once I tap out of that, those adjustments, I see the three little dots going across the top of the phone, those adjustments will sync up. And that's just metadata that gets synced back to Lightroom on the desktop to make those same adjustments as I go. Okay. Next question that people will usually have is, well, what if I don't like my adjustments? And, and of course, we can do undo. By the way, you can also see a before and after. That's what that icon is in the upper left-hand corner. You can see your before and after. Um, and I want to just point out that if you swipe over or go over to the right at the bottom where it says reset, you'll have the ability to reset just the adjustments, reset all, reset to the point where you imported it or reset to the point to where you just opened it. So I just opened it now, there's nothing to reset. So you have multiple reset options if you think you messed up and you wanna go back. Um, all right, last but not least, well, before I put the phone down, this was another concern that people had and this, this kind of gets overlooked or overshadowed by the HDR feature. Um, people sometimes say, well, Syncing to, um, I'm on a slow connection, a 3G connection. I don't have time for it to sync all the way up to the cloud and back down to my computer. Is there a faster way I can get these raw files to my computer? And if you want to hardwire in and sync it the old fashioned way, that was impossible for the DNGs before and now it is no longer impossible. You can actually, uh, oh, I'm going to the wrong menu there. We can share and now at the very bottom, there's an export original. That means take the DNG or take the um, HDR DNG and put it on the camera roll. Then you can do whatever you want from there. You can stick it in Dropbox or put it wherever you want, wherever you think you need to put that file uh, once it's on the camera roll or plug in your phone and sync it that way. Or if you're on Android, of course, um, you might be putting it on a memory card if you do it that way. Okay, so before I forget, um, Next question people usually ask is, well, what cameras is this supported on? So I stole a handy list from the Lightroom Journal website. Uh, for iOS users, it's the same as it was for RAW. So it is uh, the iPhone, starting with the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, 7, 7 Plus, the current versions, of course, iPhone SE, and iPad Pro 9.7 inch. We didn't make these decisions, Apple did. So Apple decided that those were the phones that would support raw capture. Um, and basically it's any iOS device with a 12 megapixel or going forward, higher camera. For Android, uh, at this point, it is the Samsung S7, S7 Edge, Google Pixel, and Pixel XL. Those are the ones supported on the Android side. I know you're saying, well, my phone's not there yet on the Android side, and of course, we're doing the best we can to support the best ones we can, um, or, or the most popular ones, I should say, that we can. Okay, let's see. Uh, I see a couple questions in there. One about monitor calibration. Terry, can uh, someone off topic, do you personally keep your monitor calibrated? I haven't calibrated a monitor in probably 25 years, so I am definitely not the person to ask about color calibration. Okay, next, um, again, I've got the image here. This is the raw file that came over. It's always named HDR, so I'll know which one it is. It shows me what it was shot with. And again, if I go to the develop module, I now have the ability to um, work on this further in develop or adjust it for, or get rid of the settings or change the settings or do whatever I wanna do once I'm in the develop module. All right, uh, no iPad 12 inch. No, because the iPad 12 inch doesn't have a 12 megapixel camera. 
So unfortunately, I have the iPad 12 inch Pro and I can't do it either uh, on my iPad. So no iPad 7 Pro, unfortunately, because it was too early. That was the one that didn't have the 12 megapixel camera. So at this point, here are the settings. And again, I can go in and tweak these to my heart's content and continue working. So for example, I forgot to add a little vibrance. And under effects, I usually haven't met a photo yet that can't handle a little dehaze. Oh, that's a little too much dehaze. Maybe right about there. And then uh, we can always, of course, do some non-destructive cropping. Let's pull this down, just oh, let's unlock the perspective and pull that down just a bit. Maybe something more like that would do it. All right, guys, that is my time. Uh, I saw lots of questions that I think I got most of them answered. Let's make sure that I'm not missing any. I think I'm missing any. And I think that's going to be it. Okay. All right, guys, I'm here on the Lightroom channel once a month, um, usually the third Thursday of the month. Month will be Photoshop World. So I may be doing it live from Photoshop World or it may get rescheduled for April. But other than that, I'm here the third Thursday of the month doing these streams. And uh, you can catch me on. You can catch me on the Creative Cloud Facebook page, the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, and of course, uh, many of the other product channels like um, InDesign and Adobe Stock and Spark Page and or Spark and many others. All right, uh, what about phone lens extensions? What about them? They would be no different. So they either, if either you like them or you don't. I typically don't use them, so I don't really have an opinion one way or the other. All right, cheers, everybody. I'm going to bail out because that's my time, and we're going to let you get back to whatever it was you're doing and hopefully now capturing some HDR images. Cheers, take care, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.